Recently, I've seen a lot of people post their setups on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube with portable monitors like these. And as somebody who's always itching to add a new tech gadget to my setup, it wasn't two seconds before I was in a rabbit hole. I'm gonna share with you my thoughts when it comes to portable monitors and help answer a few questions like how much are they? What are useful features that you should be looking out for? And should you even buy one? As a disclaimer, ViewSonic did send this TD1655 over for demonstration purposes, but everything I say about portable monitors in this video is still relevant no matter which product you are considering. But if you do find this video helpful, don't forget to like, share, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and maybe check out the links in the description to help support people who support us. Hashtag support local. So after some rigorous digging, I've come to realize that portable monitors can be categorized into three main groups based on price. Group number one is the hashtag cheap buy ones and these are the more affordable options under 1000 ringgit like the VA 1655 at 599 ringgit. They'll probably be one of your impulse buys during payday or 1111 sales which is coming soon. At this price point, you're not going to get the best color accuracy or response times, but these monitors are still plenty good enough for you to watch YouTube tutorials while learning software like DaVinci Resolve or 3ds Max, watch Netflix or pull up Spotify while studying or working, monitor your computer's temps in case your cooler or fans prematurely die, and maybe also read walkthroughs while gaming because you're kiasu. But you know I'm talking about those secondary tasks that your eyes are not going to be too picky about. These hashtag cheap buy monitors monitors might also not have the best build quality, uh, probably with a plastic chassis like the VA1655, so you might want to be a little more gentle with them. But then again, they're also pretty affordable, so I really wouldn't sweat it. Group number two is gonna be touching the mid-level. I'm talking about monitors that are slightly more expensive, like this TD1655 priced at 1,399 ringgit. At this price point, like me, you're probably squeezing your brain juice to justify some reasons to purchase one. Luckily for you, I've already done all that, so let me ration you, I mean, help you out. At the mid-range, you might want a touchscreen, uh, which will allow you to interact with your PC like it's an oversized iPad. Very useful for scrolling through documents on the side like uh, reading scripts while editing or going through notes during an online meeting. A touchscreen is also pretty handy for people who mainly work off their phones. This will give you the flexibility of having a larger screen if you are sharing with a client for instance, or uh, watching videos with friends and family. As a content creator, which I do admit is a little niche, I do find the touchscreen very useful for navigating uh, menus in software like sliders in Photoshop or scrubbing through the timeline uh, and uh, color grading in Lumetri Color for Premiere Pro. Um, the Winchy Resolve sort of works, but because you cannot customize the menu, I wouldn't recommend it. One thing to note is that if you hook up a touchscreen like this TD1655 to a Mac, while the display will still show, the touch capability will be rendered useless by default. You'll probably need some sort of third-party software, but it doesn't work right out of the box. However you slice it, a touchscreen is going to be much more niche than the hashtag cheap buy options. But if you do find use for it, it's still pretty good to have in your arsenal, especially if you're working on the go. The third and final group is the super extra ones. I'm talking about people who already have primary monitor setups with mini LED or OLED and are just looking for some excuse to buy another screen to stick into their desk setup. So if you're a bangsawan like me, then you wouldn't want your secondary or tertiary screen to cramp your overall style. You're probably looking at something like the ViewSonic VP16 OLED, which is priced at 2,199 ringgit. 
it. Not only does that monitor come with an upgraded panel which is 8-bit plus FRC with a much more superior color accuracy, it also gets quite a bit brighter at 400 nits which makes it a little bit more suitable for working outside. I can even see people using it during video production as a client or director's monitor. Or if you're super extra, you can always hook it up to an ROG Ally or Switch and use it like a very tiny and cute OLED TV. But honestly, something like that is a total luxury that you should only consider if you already have a decent primary setup. If not, just take that money and top up your budget for your primary monitor setup. For those of you who have already made up their minds in purchasing a monitor like this, let me tell you a few features that you should look out for. If you're going to be lugging it around a lot, you want something that is under 17 inches and that is light but still durable. Something like the TD1655 might be a good fit with its aluminum body that only weighs less than 1 kilogram. Or you could go lighter with the VA1655 but sacrifice some durability. You'd also want at least a 1080p resolution. Why? Because it's already 2023. Jokes aside, if you have a screen that has a too low resolution, when you get close to it while working, your eyes are gonna hurt. Figuratively and also literally. Thirdly, also look out for multiple I.O. ports to extend the functionality of your devices. Take your phone for instance, if you're connecting your phone to your portable monitor, you are using up your only USB-C port. So if the monitor has more USB ports, you can even charge both your devices with a power bank or a power adapter. With all that said and done, should you even buy one? Okay, if you're one of those people that are comparing this to a tablet like an iPad, then you should probably look elsewhere. This is ultimately still a monitor and not a standalone device. You should treat the portable monitor as a hype man for your devices. It is there to make your phone, laptop, PC, ROG Ally more useful than they already are. It is the lumbar pillow to your ergonomic chair, the ikan bilis to your nasi lemak, the fries to your double cheeseburger, the robin to your Batman. So yeah, I'm probably going to buy one for my setup, either the touchscreen or one of those OLED ones because I don't want my other monitors to discriminate against a portable monitor that has a lower color accuracy. 11, 11 sales is also coming soon. So I've left some links to Shopee and Lazada for you guys to check out in case you're interested in any of the monitors that I mentioned in this video. It also help us a little bit while not cost you anything extra. If you thought this video was helpful, don't forget to like and share and leave a comment down below to let me know what you actually think about portable monitors. Do you think they are necessary or do you think that they are a luxury? Also, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit that notification bell and follow us on Facebook, TikTok and Instagram to see more shenanigans from the Mob House crew. Again, in case you didn't know, my name is Shane, Bang Sawan Shane from Mob House and I will see you in the next one.